pretty much like the draw in front of a hobbit hole mm -hmm. Very for good. golden knob. I'm going to count to three with each number that door will open and when I get to number three you'll walk through and tell me where you are. One, two, and three. Walk on through. Notice are you indoors or outdoors? In, indoors. Indoors, yes. What's indoors? What do you see there? I yes. can see the ceiling. It's white. Mm -hmm. Yes. And ornamented where the ceiling meets the wall. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's a window mm -hmm. with lead and lead stripes in it. Yes, dividing the window into nine rectangles. Yes, and a wooden frame around the window made of glass. The frame itself made of white wood. Beautiful. Painted whitely. What is and what else do you see in this room? There's a table in the middle of the room and chair on each side, one chair. A wooden table wooden chairs with a cushion on each chair. Yes. In this room in which you are in, does it seem like a modern room or older room? It looks like an older room. Mm -hmm. Are you by yourself in that room? Pretty much feels like that, yes. At the moment, I'm by myself. Mm -hmm. Look down at your feet. What do your feet look like? Um, it almost looks like I'm wearing shoes you normally wear in a house that are kind of furry. Yes. Or with some soft texture, but it could also be that my feet themselves are furry, hairy. Mm -hmm. And what about your legs? What do your legs look like? They look hairy as well. Mm -hmm. And like, like carrying a dark fur, a black or brown dark fur. Yes. Harry. Very good. Are you wearing any clothing? <laughs> Not really. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. So notice Seems what your body looks like. I get the image of a centaur, mm -hmm. like a horse body with the torso. Yes being humanoid. Mm -hmm. So your torso is humanoid? Yes. Do you the have rest of it any arms or legs? Four legs like like a horse more or less. Yes. Like a horse and the upper body, the torso is like human without any limbs without any limbs yeah mm -hmm. what does your head look like I guess I have massive eyebrows and big nose with 
huge nostrils. Mm -hmm. And I got horns on my head. Mm -hmm. Standing out from from the temples. Mm -hmm. And dense hair. And normal ears, mm -hmm. like a human would have. Yes. What about your eyes? They pretty much look like my own eyes. Mm-hmm. Very good. But a little, a little dark, a little more brown hue, tint to it. Yes. Very good. So what is it that you're doing in this place? I'm a guard of some type. You're a guard. Mm -hmm. Tell me more. I'm not really sure if I'm guarding this place or if I'm just visiting. Yes. But um, yes, it seems like it's more a kind of a visit, and I'm a guard somewhere else, but in a place similar to this one. Very good. Very good. So let's find out a little bit about what it is that you do. Allow that scene to close, and I'll call, I'll count to three when I get to number three. Be at the place in which you live. One, two, and three. You're there now. I'm outside. Mm -hmm. On a green meadow. Mm -hmm. There's a forest to my left. Mm -hmm. And a wide open field to my right. And far in the distance, I can see a mountain range, mountain top. Yes. Covered with snow. Yes. Type of some type of Middle Earth scenery. And it somehow smells like a battle is coming up. Mm -hmm. No signs of, of battle or warring so far. Just a feeling. Yes. And what is your responsibility when there are battles? I'm a commander. Mm -hmm. And who do you command? It's an army of centaurs. Mm -hmm. And I believe other creatures as well, mm -hmm. different races joined in one army. And these centaurs seem to be representing some type of front line. Yes. Advance a little bit more and see what happens. What's happening now? There is an army approaching, coming over the mountains. Mm -hmm. And my army is all lined up on the battlefield already. Yes. Waiting for the opponent's army to 
approach. Yes. Notice what you're feeling at this moment, what emotions are going through you. I feel a little tension, mm -hmm. but I'm calm and ready. Very good. It's like I've done this many times before, and I'm yeah. confident Very it's going to turn out all right. Mm -hmm. What happens next? The enemy's army is assume position. What do they look like? They look dark, like a dark army dressed up in black and somehow like bird creatures. Yes, bird creatures. Avian creatures. Mm-hmm. Mm. Are they small or large? They are large and stand upright, mm -hmm. bipedal walk, yes. four limbs, so they look humanoid, mm -hmm. like feathers, and their heads are almost like their helmets are merged with their beaks, big beaks mm -hmm. that are rounded with a pointy edge pointing towards the ground. Mm -hmm. They're all black. Yes. How and many do they... you see? Everything I see in front of me is basically the army. All right. Countless, countless numbers of soldiers and war instruments like catapults, slingshots, huge slingshots, mm -hmm. or massive rocks. But those rocks are also black and covered with some type of tar or goo, mm -hmm. hardly any colors to make out in the scenery. Mm -hmm. It's like the entire atmosphere or the energy turned into black energy, shrouding the black sky above it. Yes, continue. The dark energy is what is approaching my army first. It's covering the green green meadow, the green grass. Everything is turning black. And Right in front of us, it's stopping there's some type of invisible energy shield that this energy is unable to penetrate. What is this energy field? It's a barrier we set up to protect us from the energy approaching it's mm -hmm. a shield. Yes. Is it working? It's working. And the dark energy can't come through. So next, the soldiers, the foot soldiers, are going to have to come closer. Mm -hmm. But... Yes. The, the huge, this, these huge slingshots are being fired. It's those black rocks covered in black tar and goo. Mm -hmm. 
they are hitting our shield. Yeah. Thereby weakening it. And Yes. What happens next? The light shield is being impacted, but it's not collapsing so far. Mm -hmm. But my people, my soldiers are becoming upset or frightened by this massive onslaught of dark energy, this dense energy. Yes. And my niece can feel how the soldiers feel because my knees start shaking mm -hmm. slightly, yes. trembling. Yes, and continue. The sh shield is not gonna hold back the dark energy for much longer. It's about to collapse. And what is it that creates this shield? How is it created? There are some type of magicians in the background mm -hmm. wielding their staffs, yes. creating this shield, this massive shield. There are several, no, no only one sorcerer or magician. Yes. But there are other ones behind him that are not involved so far. Mm -hmm. Yes. Let's continue. My knees are sh starting shaking more heavily. Mm -hmm. and my body, entire body is joining. It's like it's representing the the shield so mm -hmm. that's collapsing right now. Yes. The remnants of the shield still in the air, but the structure itself is weakened and penetrable. And that's when the adversary's army starts running towards us. Yes. Yes, continue. It's, it's like they are bird beings, but they are also faceless beings with hoods. They have a mouth somehow with dark rotten teeth. Mm -hmm. Where the same gooey black substance is dripping from. And they are screeching and, and making weird noises that us to intimidate my soldiers. Is it working? Some are intimidated, others are well familiar with going to war. Mm -hmm. They have experienced this before. They are more mature when it comes to battle and they are not intimidated that easily. Yes. They stand tall yes, from the as, front line. And as commander, what is your responsibility for your soldiers? I'm telepathically encouraging those who are trembling mm -hmm. or those who are shaking to stand tall, calm down, focus, center their energy, yes, and get ready, get into position to take on the onslaught of the enemy. Yes. And what weapons do you have to protect yourself from these from these enemies? Swords or long staffs with long blades at, at the top. And 
heavy armor, metal helmets mm -hmm. with some type of energetic layer on it mm -hmm. to further strengthen their defensive power. Yes. This, this layer is also covering the entire armor and the body of each soldier. Very good. Yes. So, mm, the enemy's front line is crushing into the first line of defense, which is the centaurs. Mm -hmm. They are hitting them massively with their hooves, with their hooves. With the hooves. Mm -hmm. It's like they standing on the two back hooves and hitting them with, mm -hmm. with their own front hooves. Yes. But they are not holding any other weapons because they don't have hands, as far as I can tell. Mm -hmm. yes. But some may have hands, and I'm not really sure about this detail. Mm -hmm. They carry long staffs with, with blades as well, and chopping off heads of the avian soldiers. Mm -hmm. And when the blades strike through the hoods of those other beings, nothing happens. There is no f no face, no no head under those hoods. They could hit with something physical. Yes, they are not impacted. So how do you fight something that doesn't have anything physical? It's the sorcerers from the background that are coming into play now. Mm -hmm. They are forming balls of energy with sacred geometric structures. They are forming those with their hands and project them into the battlefield, hitting those creatures in their faces and they disappear. Mm -hmm. So what's left? Just like their clothes drop to the ground empty. Mm -hmm. Some vanish completely, but, but the, the clothes form into this gooey substance and cover the soil. Yes, how does it's, that affect you? It makes the ground muddy and hard, mm -hmm. hardly walkable. Some type of mud that the centaurs get stuck in with their hooves and mm -hmm. they cannot walk anymore. So can move. What's happening to you? I'm standing tall. I'm somehow able to, to walk on, on this mud. Mm -hmm. And my Soldiers are, the centaurs are being slaughtered. They can move away. Yes. They got some kind, type of, of armor or energetic layer that covers them, but will only hold strong for a short amount of time. Yes. Yes, continue. What happens next? It hurts knowing that my soldiers will be yeah. right down. 
Quatro. I have seen this so many times that I'm focused and able to command mm -hmm. those units from the background that need to be emerging on the battlefield right now to counter yeah. the strike, the first strike. Yes. So what happens next? There are more soldiers coming from the back lines. Your soldiers and are theirs. Mine. Mm -hmm. And but those are not the centaurs. Those are different soldiers who look somehow like elves, elves mm -hmm. maybe elven mm -hmm. soldiers. Yes. They got a some type of angelic energy to them. Mm -hmm. Very airy. Yes. But experienced soldiers that can strike heavily and they are surging in, taking on the enemies and driving them back with each blow by blow. Some are getting into infights one on one, but those infights are partly displaced by those slingshots and their projectiles. Yes. This is those big rocks of with, with covered covered with this black substance. Mm -hmm. And the battle is going on for quite some time. It's almost yes. getting dark. Yes. And I feel my sorcerers getting weaker yes. and tired. And the scenery is slowly but surely taking over by this dark energy. Mm -hmm. Until my forces are defeated. And the dark, the, the forest that was to my left turning back as well. The trees are being affected and the roots are penetrated by this black energy and they are disintegrating. The soil is turning black too. And all the creatures in the wood, in the forest, dropping dead from the trees the birds, the squirrels, rabbits all turning black. Some are becoming so zombie-like mm -hmm. creatures. Yes. And focus on yourself. What's happened to you? This dark substance is taking me over too. Yes. It has already covered my entire body, strengthened, uh, which was strengthened by that energetic armor. Yes. But this layer is gone as well, and it's going inside through all my holes. It's coming into my mouth, and I swallow it. It's yes. taking me over completely. And I become a zombie myself. So up until this I, moment, what's been the most difficult part of all of this? Being powerless, seeing my forces being slaughtered. Mm -hmm. has never happened to me before because I was always the conqueror. Yes. Who was yes. the victorious last one leaving the battlefield, taking on any enemy, mm -hmm. no power that could overcome me. But it's the total opposite this time. Mm -hmm. I have no reactions. It's like I'm 
just frozen, just dead. Mm -hmm. No emotions, just like a zombie. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't even care anymore that I lost, that I'm powerless. I don't know any of it. Doesn't matter. Yes. How are all of these things now affecting you in the life as Ronald? What does it make you do? It makes me feel the same many times that I can connect on an empathic level mm -hmm. to the suffering of other people. Yes. Some, sometimes I deeply feel the suffering of other people, but sometimes when I should be supposed to feel it, I don't care. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's their choice. They must have done something that makes them feel like this. And I have no, I feel, I have no pity. Mm -hmm. It's their what fault. What does it keep you from doing in our life as Ronald? keeps me from connecting to my own pain, mm -hmm. my broken heart. Very good. Very good. So I'm going to count from one to three. When I get to number three, you will continue with this experience and tell me how it is that this body dies. One, two, and three. Yes. There is this huge soldier in front of me mm -hmm. with an edge sword. And he's high, holding it high up in the, in the sky and over his head. and strikes it, simply cutting me into half, and I fall apart, disintegrating into pieces. And where is your I don't soul? Ex it's leaving my body, it's hovering above the scene, and this is watching my body cut in half, mm -hmm. disintegrating absorbed fully by, by this black substance, this black energy, darkness. Very good. So listen very carefully. I'm going to count from one to three. When I get to number three, you will see how all of this originated, how all of this war began. But this time, you're going to experience it and feel it with a lot more emotion, feeling everything. One, two, and three. How does this all begin? Feels like those dark creatures invaded from another planet. Mm -hmm. Those the people on, on that planet used to be people of the light themselves before they got taken over by this dark energy. It seems almost seems like this dark energy simply was spreading throughout the galaxy, the universe, mm -hmm. taking one planet after the other, one by one. Yes. Taking over all creatures in the life force of each planet. And from there on spreading to the next one. Mm -hmm. Yes. Seems like this energy is the counterpart to the light mm -hmm. has ever existed, ever been in existence since light was formed. It's a keeping everything balanced. And tell me about your planet and your energy. It's a planet of light. 
love, and laughter. There's so much joy and fun around here. Mm -hmm. And close connections and relationships to every li living being. Every creature is, being, is, is connected with nature and in the energies. People have a strong connection to this uplifting, powerful energy, this life force. It's uh, emanating everything, giving nice life and power to everything that's on this planet. Very good. And what is it that you do on this planet? <laughs> I'm somehow involved with working on a fun fair. Mm -hmm. uh, Maybe, maybe somehow responsible for making people laugh and mm -hmm. feeling their emotions and helping people to be more joyous when they feel blue mm -hmm. or down for whatever reason. Yes. I'm, I'm sort of cosmic, a divine comedian. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so what happens next? Life is going on as normal, but people see the dark and feel the dark energy spreading out mm -hmm. in space. Yes. And basically for no reason, First troops of a foreign army yes. are conquering parts of this planet. Mm -hmm. But those troops initially, we were able to repel them, but they kept coming back over and over again with an ever increasing number of soldiers. Yes. And I'm I wasn't a soldier at all before, but over time, our own people decreased in number, and I was felt the urge to enlist and mm. defend my planet. Yes. Continue. What happens then? And. I quickly went up the ranks and became an experienced and skilled warrior. Mm -hmm. And were able, I was able to repel those intruding forces many times. Mm -hmm. And I became a commander or even general yes commanding our forces until this very day where I died when I died all right I want you to go through that I want you to experience this now where did it all start the weakening The weakening of my army or of my emotions? You tell me. What came first? Mm. My, my emotions. I suffered heavily in my ability to connect to my emotions. Mm hmm by every victim on the battlefield, no matter what origin. Yes. Every death of a loved one 
for a foreign being. Every transmutation of life force energy into dark energy took a toll on me, mm -hmm. weakened my ability to feel emotions. Yes. And I hardened. So I want you to think about this and how it is that it's affecting now the lifetime as Ronald. Deeply gut wrenching mm -hmm. and it's penetrating deep into my guts and into my entire being. Yes. Taking so very taking at least little rest of life for us. Mm -hmm. Emotions, empathy, mm -hmm. the ability to help others. Yes. Yeah. And when that ability to help others is taken away from you, notice what it keeps you from doing in the life as Ronald. It keeps me from shining my light. Mm -hmm. Standing tall and bright. Yes. I have so much to give. Yes. I can't I can't give it because I fear losing the rest of keeps me alive. Yes. Very good. So I want you to go ahead and continue with that life. I'm going to count to three. When I get to number three, you'll be at the end of that lifetime once again. What's happening to you? This time I want you to feel everything. It's when I'm cut into, when I'm being cut into two halves, like a part of me is being absorbed by the darkness. With the equal amount of energy is going up into the light. But my soul is incomplete. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's, it's, it lost a huge part of its power. Yes. And it's light, life force. Yes. So now that you are a soul, I want you to talk to all of those who have been overtaken by the dark. And I want you to tell them exactly how you feel about what has just happened. It's okay, it's not your fault. It's like yin and yang. Everything needs to be in balance. There's a part of you that's always been dark, the part that's always been light. And it's a natural part of us to accept that. But if the dark darkness has taken too much of your power. It's time to call it back now, to be whole again, to bring everything back into balance. So do that now. Demand that that light come back. Give me back my power. Give me back my light, my life for everything I have been missing. Everything that you have taken from me. Everything that brought me out of balance. It's mine. It was ever mine. And it will be forever mine. Take it Stark all and light and perfect balance. Take it all back. Give it back every last piece of it. That's it.
And now that you have your power back, I want you to notice what it is that you have taken from them, what you have absorbed from them. I've taken back and absorbed dark energy, but light energy as well, the perfect amount. It's all in perfect balance. Very good. So now I want you to notice the power that you had in that lifetime. The role that you had to command others and be strength to them. And I want you to talk to all of those that depended on you for the strength and talk to all of those. What do you say to your people? Please forgive me that I wasn't able to protect you from the darkness. I tried so hard. I couldn't handle the darkness. It was too powerful. Mm -hmm. What do they say to you? It wasn't your fault. You gave everything, everything you had. You gave the last piece of, of yourself. Mm -hmm. We love you. It's all right. Feel the love coming. Feel their love as it fills your heart. Feel the overwhelming love of those that stood by you, believed in you, who loved you. I love you all. I love each and every one of you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your love. I know that I deserve it. Yes. And I know that you deserve my love, everything I had to give. I gave it with joy and generosity. And I feel you deeply humbled to have served you. And you will now understand why you chose to come to this life to be with them again. Yes. Very good. And now you could look at the eyes of the dark ones, the ones who have been taken over by the dark. Have you seen those eyes before? Do you recognize that energy? Yes, I do. Mm -hmm. I know them in my life. Mm -hmm. They don't, they seem to be challenging me, but they are not as cruel. And mm -hmm. They don't carry the same dark energy. Yes. This lifetime trying to support me on some level. Mm -hmm. So why is it that this soul has chosen to be in their presence again? I believe it's about balancing out karma. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, putting me through challenges and tests yes. to regain my own power, my strength. Yes. My confidence and to be in a position to help others once again. Is this soul ready to take on that challenge? Yes. Mm -hmm. Very good. So I want you to create your own new arrangement. Words you can say to yourself about taking on this challenge. What agreement do you make with yourself? I commit to not run away anymore from challenging experiences, 
not playing small anymore and dim my light. Trust to be accepted by others. I'm here to shine my light. I came to shine my light and I'm gonna shine my light as brightly as never before. Very good. <sighs> Very good. And feel that energy of this centaur. So joyful, so full of laughter and power. Mm -hmm. Feels so wonderful, so like home. Mm -hmm. I feel the energy of the cosmic comedian. Yeah. That's what I used to be like once in this lifetime. Mm -hmm. But it's been long gone. Mm -hmm. It feels like it's coming back. Very good. Very good. So I want you to go ahead and take that centaur into the light now. Knowing that with the death of that body, that experience is over. And you could breathe in that light. And you can now use that light to shine on to the lifetime that you're living as Ronald. And as you are in the light, you're greeted by many loved ones and your guide. What does your guide tell you about that life as a centaur? It was meant to be that way. Everything your experience was in divine order. Mm -hmm. It's all the balance between light and dark that has ever been and will ever be. It has to be restored on earth as well. Mm -hmm. You are part of this. You were part of this. And you are going to be part of this in ways you cannot imagine. You got to trust. All you need is trust, trust, trust that you are not only dark, but you're also the light, the light you've been missing. Now's the time to bring it back into balance. This is true on a personal level, as it is true on a collective level. It's about time to balance out everything that was obstructed by the dark. It's time for the light to shine once more. For the people to come together, be people of light, shed the darkness, and integrate all of it in perfect harmony with every living being. No matter if friend or foe, it's about being alive, about cherishing whatever is alive, and celebrating that you are given life that you were created, that you are part of creator, and that you are able, whatever you wish to experience. It's time to create with joy, to create with laughter. To hug each other, even if you don't feel like hugging. To see the light in those you judge. To be there, to be a beacon of light, even if you don't feel like that. You have it all in you. You just need to let it out. You are supported way beyond belief. 
All you need is to trust, believe in yourself. Believe that you are the creator yourself. Don't play small. I am you. And you are me. I know your hearts are bleeding. My dear children. Mine is bleeding too. But we are so much stronger than our pain. We are love. Love conquers all. We're just love. It's everything that's needed. You are the love with every fiber of your being. You are love in every deed, choice, or thought. All your energy is love. And so it shall be. Just believe and trust. It's Very all good. divine order. Very good. I have a question about the dark night of the soul. Why is it that Ronald needed to go through that experience? Him and others that get to a point where they don't even want to be here anymore. What is it that he needed to experience and why? It's about the darkness and not being able, not being able to see any light anymore. It's those times when you ponder and contemplate how to best commit suicide, how to end your life, how to end suffering, how to give up the very last remaining pieces of power. It's that when you crack open, just a little tiny spark of light comes through, but it's enough for the light to penetrate the darkest, most hardened stru structure inside of you. It just needs that little spark of light to reanimate that light that is still in you, so deeply buried that you think you've lost it all. And many, many more will go through this in the next month. The days to follow are going to be dark times, heavy times, but the light is always there. It's always as strong as you need it and much more powerful. And once it has been touched by the little spark of light that has come through, through the trick. It's that your light inside begins firing up. The fire is being lit up again. And it's going to become a wildfire, ever stronger. And the stronger it gets, the more support you get, the more love will seep in through the cracks. The more cracks your structure will endure, break open more and more, and finally dissolve. So that one day you will look back at all the challenges you never imagined yourself were capable of taking on. And you will be with us again, laughing, celebrating, without alcohol, just with joy and the company of each other. And you will see everything is light and love. And it's all been a play you chose for yourself. The most realistic play, you'd call it, Virtual reality, as good as it can get. But at the end, it's just a play. And will, it will enable all of us, our souls, to become so much wiser, 
and grow so much and make me experience myself on a level I never thought possible that there's so much to learn about myself I didn't know before. Very Thank good. you. Very good. Now you talk about dark times ahead. Is that for just Ronald or everyone? It feels like mostly Ronald, mm -hmm. but it depends. You are the creators. You focus on the light and there's light. And all those worst case scenarios are going to disappear. The timeline simply collapses. If you focus on the dark, then dark is what you get. But inevitably, the dark will only be temporary. The light has already won. Mm. It's coming in strongly. And it's up to you if you prolong or choose to prolong your suffering or be in heaven right now. It's all up to you. Just imagine and believe. Trust. Trust in yourself. Trust in your support. Trust that the light is coming day by day, hour by hour, minute by minute, second by second. And you can't imagine there's so much light. Mm -hmm. So much light and more and more and more, ever more. Very good. And when you talk about the light, sometimes I think about just our daily occupation, how can we find something that brings light and love into our life when we have a mundane job, something that is not very fulfilling? How do you find light in that? Connect to this spark of light inside of you. Feel it and know it's the same spark and all the people around you, all the people that are trying to give you a hard time, that you judge for being the cause of your suffering. And realize that spark is your spark. Just imagine a light, a silhouette of light standing behind each of those dark persons, those people that are pretty much filled with the dark energy, one of fought as a centaur, it might be in them. But after all, it's just a gooey substance. It's the darkness that you, with your light, can turn into light, absorb it, make the people laugh. Because no matter what those people go through in their mind, they will always want to laugh. And just think about a joke or anything that might lighten them up and share it with them, and it will benefit all of you. Every little glimpse of light the heart of another, in your own heart, in your world, whatever way it may be created. You are creative beings. Spark your fire of creativity. Imagine. Make it all up. No matter if it feels like it's been made up. It is real. It is your creative creativity that decides it all. Just imagine a spark of light and the light will spread, spread whatever is dark, absorb all the judgment, whatever is dividing people, just see the light in and be behind those people, all around them, and it will absorb and transmute the dark energy. 
And one day, maybe sooner than you think, there will be nothing but light left. And those dark memories will fade into the dark for a long time. You don't need to think about this anymore. Just about the future, the bright future you want to create. Put all your emphasis and focus there. And this is how it shall be. Once again, you create. Darkness has no power over you. None of you. Just wish it to be like that. And it is. And it will ever be. You are me. You are God. Very good. So, when we first started, I was told that the chakras were being blocked. How are the chakras looking on Ronald right now? The solar plexus might need some unblocking. Mm -hmm. The chest, the heart area, the high heart, the throat, third eye, crown, soul star shark, chakra, feet, knees, root and sacrum. Mm -hmm. Are they all blocked? Needs some, some better energy flow. Okay. So I'd like to go ahead and strike the tuning fork for each one of those chakras. I want you to just focus on the chakra area. And as I strike the tuning fork, I want you to go ahead and balance that out, knowing that your mind, your intention, your creativity is the one that attunes these chakras. We'll begin now with the root. And tell me if I need to strike it again. One more time, please. When you feel it balanced, just tell me. It's okay. Very good. So X, you feel the root chakra balanced. We're going to now go to the sacral chakra. All right. Very good. And now let's focus on the solar plexus. Just breathe. Release anything that no longer serves you. 
I release it all. You are loved. Okay. And now focus your attention on your heart. Focus on forgiving those who have hurt you. Focus on forgiving yourself for hurting yourself. For imposing limits on yourself. for attachments and addictions that have kept you from fulfilling your mission here. Let it go. Let it all go. Go, go, go. Go. Never come back. All I'm doing is doing me. Trust being me. No foreign energies anymore to hinder me and dim, alive, dim my light. It's all my light, all my energy in perfect balance. I am me. Trust me. That's all that's needed. I don't need to be what other people expect from me. It's okay to be me, trust me. With that, we will release the throat so that you can speak your truth to others and to yourself. Emphasizing the importance of speaking the truth to yourself first, that you are divine, that you are creator, that you are loved by God, that you are always guided. I speak the truth, nothing but the truth. There's nothing made up, it's the truth. And the truth I shall speak for everybody to hear loud and clear. One more. more. And let's focus now on your third eye. your connection to God, to your higher self, to your guides. Opening up that third eye for intuition. Allowing the universe to guide you.
guiding you to manifest your reality, your white light creation. your heaven on earth. And now let's focus on your crown, your connection with the divine. Widening it. Allowing your life to be lived, following the light, following God's truth, being an example for others. And now as you see your energetic body, tell me what it looks like with all the chakras flowing and balanced. The energy is flowing freely. Body is bathing. It's fully energized. Very good. So what is the reason why Ronald was brought to the session today? He needed confirmation. We needed to believe, to betra to trust, to believe it's already all in him. We got it all. He just needs to let it out and share it with the world. Wonderful. Is there anything else or do you feel that we are complete for today? He needs to see where to go. Very good. And so I'm going to count from one to three. At number three, you will see the door. The door that will take you to the visions, the templates. One. Two. And three. Open that door. What is laid out in front of you? Say, future civilization with the Earth, with many new technological advancements, but in perfect balance with nature, all realms connected. Yes. People are gifted or just live out what they would formerly have termed gifted, but it's just become normal and natural, talking telepathically, being able to wield their gifts and abilities. It's a perfect fusion of Middle-earth and Star Trek in contact with Galactic civilizations, mm -hmm. as friends and not as foes, as brothers and sisters, one with nature, one with source. They are living happily ever after. <laughs> yeah. Everyone's having a good time and laughing, having so much joy, bright sky. Many new colors and abundance for everyone. So no take worries. a moment and memorize this, knowing that your future is created by your visualization, your imagination. Allow yourself 
to engrave this in your mind so that you can move forward into this future. Create your timeline now. Bring in more details. See yourself doing what you do in this place, in this time. And as you visualize this, you'll be able to come back to this memory anytime you wish, reinforcing it so that you can create this future. You can be a part of it. And when you're ready, you can come right back out the door and tell me when you've come back. Back. Very good. So with that now, I'd like for you to select a color that represents healing for the mind, body, and spirit so that you can move forward now with this new vibration. What color would you like to choose? Gold, blue, purple, green. Beautiful. And with that combination, I'll use the crystalline tuna fork to bring in all of those colors. <whistles> Bathe your head with this color. Feeling your torso lit up with all of these colors. All the way down to your feet. All of your organs filled with this crystalline energy and add into your skin the largest organ you have, wrapping yourself in this beautiful combination of colors like a beautiful blanket, multicolors. And I'm going to count from one to five with each number. You'll be waking up more and more. And when I get to number five, you open your eyes with complete control of your mind and your body. And five, wide awake, completely alert feeling wonderful all over. <sighs> <Welcome back. laughs> How was that? Wow. <laughs> Magical. Wow. I'm buzzing with energy. <laughs> what a great experience. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Ooh, so magical. Beyond everything I could have ever imagined, for sure. Wonderful. Ooh. That was quite a ride. Yeah, indeed it was. Ah, Just need to come back slowly. Yeah. Still lacking a little bit of orientation. <laughs> Still buzzing, huh? Yep. Yeah. That was Ooh. fantastic. That was a magic ride. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Oh, so grateful, Alba. Can't put it into words. I mean, I, I remember a lot of it, mostly everything, but yeah. it'll take a time to digest it fully and integrate it as a whole. And wow. just the greatest gift I could ever have imagined. It's nothing short of that. Thank you for that. I Thank appreciate you. That. Thank you. Wow. So do you want to share this with others? Sure. Why not? I guess this needs to be out there. It has a lot of... What a profound message. <clears throat> Whoever you were connecting with, which basically was a very high energy. Yeah. Must have been. I'm not sure my ego mind is kicking in, of course, <laughs> not telling uh, telling me that wasn't God or source or whatever we want to call it, but maybe it was, who knows? We've got to trust and believe, right? 
How did you do with your conscious mind? Did you keep it out of the way? Yeah, it, it was fine. I kept telling it before the session to just kick back, relax, have a good time on your own and <laughs> let me do my thing here. And it worked out fine. Fantastic. It was even possible to imagine, visualize vividly, feel it. Wow. Everything I couldn't do before. That's great. I'm so yeah. glad to hear that. I'm so glad to hear that. Big so surprise. What do, you, what do you think we should call this session? It's coming. The light is coming. There's going to be light. The light is coming. Yeah. Fantastic. Fantastic. So if we're going to publish this, tell everybody where you are. Yes, I'm from a small town in the west of Germany, close to the Dutch border. Yeah, and this is where I live and where I visit the forests and connect with nature. Yeah, and yep. this and I'm is going to be meeting you pretty soon in person. Yeah, right. It's a gathering in Hamburg. Uh, I already yeah. signed up for it and Fantastic. I hope to connect with you on a personal level and many, many people on the same deep level. And I guess it'll be like that. Yeah. Um, yeah, we're, I'm having a gathering on October 7th in Hamburg. And uh, I look forward to giving you a big hug when I see you. That'll be Yeah, fantastic. I do too. Yeah, I do too. Great. And we're going to have a lot of people there who are as powerful as you are with the light. So um, I'm pretty I know sure it's going to be yeah. an amazing it's going to be big amazing gathering. Event. We're going to start creating this new, new future that you've just imagined. Yeah. Wow. In that, in that room. It's, it's just amazing. It's going to come true. I feel it. Wow. Yeah. Perfect. Good. Good. So everyone, thank you for watching. Uh, if you want a session with me, just go to albawyman.com. Uh, that's how Ronald got the session here. And um, the you got to sign up for the newsletter. It comes out once a month. And uh, if it's your divine time, you will get this session. So thank you very much for watching. Until the next time, bye. Thank you, Alba. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Okay.